श्रीमती पारमिता महापात्रा जी शंतनु कुमार आचार्य जी राज किशोर मिश्रा एंड फ्रेंड्स आई कंग्रेचुलेट श्री ऋषिकेश मालिक फॉर एंड अदर्स फॉर गेटिंग दिस अवार्ड दिस हीज पोएम्स हैव अ स्ट्रांग rural motivation and perception of intimate joy and suffering largely rural in rural context that is basant kumar panda says about him and also he says he is poems with high introducing and words which establish un unimaginable quality and strength of oriya language it's it's really wonderful to give a present a award for such a wonderful poet friends you have invited me in spite of the fact that we do not know each other's languages the peculiarity of india's linguistic pluralism is that our languages and literature share a common history a common destiny and a common future in spite of mutual unintelligibility further it is the peculiarity of our historical situation that we are now talking to each other through a language which without being either yours or mine is now threatening to dominate and swallow up all our languages in the past our languages and literatures emerged after the first millennium in the face of sanskrit and classical tamil in the south the pioneers of our early literatures had the wisdom to retain the best from dominant traditions and reject whatever was unworkable but now at a time of we are at a time when globalization is being forced upon us by among other things the super hegemonic language english the only option of survival seems to be through translation into that language english which is becoming ruthlessly ruthless because it is everywhere but belongs nowhere unlike the english of shakespeare Shakespeare's times the words of present day english do not carry the essence of a particular landscape particular culture an identifiable section of flora and fauna further its words are losing the metaphoric meanings while gathering more and more of its conceptual meanings in the age of electronic communication so it is not just our languages that are shrinking under globalization it is all the memories hopes dreams throbs and pangs of lived experience that are threatened with extinction our languages have to live on for our literature to grow against this background of this distressing scenario you have organized this festival to celebrate your living literature and i am here in your midst as a representative of another living literature with long history i am very sorry to have begun with a pessimistic note on such an occasion but this pessimism is not without a hidden possibility of hope sometimes when languages and people vanish their lived experience survives the charms the world through literature for example yiddish the language of jews in eastern europe is hardly spoken by a few thousand people most of whom are refugees in other countries mainly us but in the work of isaac bosevic singer the accumulated wisdom of experience of this peculiar group of people makes itself felt in a very powerful way it is the job of a creative writer to live precious moments of experience from ever changing flow of time and language provide the dimension of continuity in a world where people and societies grow old and die in the light of what i said above what can we do now to protect preserve and promote our languages and literatures as a reader of my own literature and other indian literatures in translation i often notice that most of the poetry which is now being written has been has become lifeless and insipid i am deeply concerned about this for poetry is the most sensitive index of the state of language and society when i reflect on what has gone wrong time and again i feel that the language of poetry has become ruptured from cultural memories i also feel that this kind of ruptured language can neither handle the present 
nor point to the future. There is a complete disjunction between memories and aspirations. Without these, how can language of poetry lift up the precious moments of happiness and sorrow above the flux and chaos of change? The disjunction I am talking about occurred around the time of colonialism. After independence, though we became free politically, we continued to be ruled by unacknowledged legislators culturally. This is reflected in the two dominant trends of literature and art in the past independence period. They are the progressive movement, which was looking forward to the Western utopia, and the formalist modernism, which was always threatened by the Western dystopia. In spite of superficial ideological differences, the aesthetics of both these schools of modern Indian literature marked the disjunction from the past. For progressives, honored con honor consisted in the future. For formalists, even future was the same. I do not think that this is the way great modernists worked in the West. They were aware of the colossal and traumatic changes all around. At the same time, they were desperately trying to pick up the threads of continuity. A literary moment presided in India over by English English-educated upper caste, urban middle classes, did not have this kind of strength. In comparison with the Western modernism and modernists of the Latin America and Africa, our modernism was only half-formed. This created in collusion with other forces a distinction between the work and society, author and the reader, the expression and experience, the motive and meaning. If we compare the achievements of our modernist writers with those of the immediate ancestors of the period of Indian Renaissance like Ravindranath Tagore, Kuempu, Bharatiyar, the, difference, the differences involved become very clear. I belong to a generation of writers who are disenchanted with the, post, with the posture of disenchantment writ large on the face of Canada modernism. I did not have to look to Western traditions for my, for my source. Neither did I have to look up to the dominant classical traditions. My experience and expressions were forged in the environment of a small village, Shwapura, where lived a rustic and full-blooded language and people. For me, ideas mattered less than images. Abstract forms mattered much less than music and rhythm. I saw my world being threatened with modernism. In effect, all my words took on the tonality of an elegy. The passion of rustic, full-blooded people had handed down to me a whole set of verbal and non-verbal expressions through which I could, ce I could celebrate them in poetry and drama. This is how, in spite of sharing the angst of other modernists, I could infuse the language of poetry and drama with an intensely personal idiom which was also shared. I wanted to speak not to the reasoning self but to the re deep repertoire of dreams archetypes. Of late I have been trying to go beyond restless change by moving towards those culminations of human struggle and endeavor where one challenges, survives, outwits, change and death. These have been my preoccupations of late particularly in my novel. I am happy to note that the several other poets in other Indian languages broke free from modernists, which was the dominant literary culture, culture during my favorite years. In Odisha, Sita Kant Mahapatra and Rama Kantarath have the fine example of, to my mind, he, both, both their works, you know, heroic attempt to bridge memories and hopes, daunting task which only of the highest degree of integrity can undertake. What is distressing is that I see less and less of this happening in the work of younger poets in our own languages. At the same time, poets writing in English are brilliantly celebrating a soulless kind of nonsense. They make, they make do with flashy brilliance, the gift of the gab and the gracious show of knowing all, a feature which is built into the language of their medium English. I do not have any objection to English language, which has helped immensely to gain the awareness of the contemporary world. 
द स्पिरिट ऑफ एंक्विटी व्हिच वी हैड लॉस्ट आफ्टर द उपनिषद वी गेन्ड वी वी रीगेन्ड अगेन ड्यू टू अवर कॉन्टैक्ट विद दिस लैंग्वेज बट एट द सेम टाइम इट कैनॉट बी फॉरगेटन दैट द लैंग्वेज हैज डन मोर हार्म टू दैट इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज हैज डन मोर हार्म टू अस दैन गुड इट हैज डिस्ट्रॉयड अवर सेल्फ कॉन्फिडेंस आई हैव सीन मेनी ऑफ आवर स्टूडेंट्स फील अ सेम ऑफ स्पेलिंग मिस्टेक्स आर ग्रामेटिकल एरर्स इंग्लिश ग्रामेटिकल एरर्स इंग्लिश हैज बिकम ऑलमोस्ट अ सीक्रेट लैंग्वेज बिकॉज इट इज अ लैंग्वेज ऑफ सुपीरियर कल्चर the european invaders destroyed the languages of the countries which they invaded but luckily for us the languages of our country were left safe it is a historical fact that we achieved the freedom of our country along with the development of our own languages development of a language is fact which is rather ambiguous the development of languages in the contents of indian history is also the modernization of language in ancient times a poet could write poetry either in verse or in prose as in as even scientific verse could be written in verse but in modern times prose is used for the special purpose and the difference between prose and verse is definite this crucial development has its own significances which have been exploited by our writers and in modern times the process of modernization started with the adoption of a new literary form like novel essay and travelog and the transformation of ancient literary form is to adopt a new language and it is a great responsibility in the past literature was to satisfy the cultural needs of the people but nowadays culture is taken care of by our medias multimedia both the elite and the proliterate depend upon the television for culture technological instruments like television and radio do not have class consciousness and hence their wide appeal but in spite of the threat posed by our technological instruments instruments literature i believe will continue to be produced each regime has its own form of writing because writing is basically an intellectual exercise writing unlike speech is a public activity used for both popular and unpopular purposes literature will be written as long as language continues to exploit powers of languages the universe which was a mystery a few hundred years ago is being gradually demystified and what we have is a sense of emptiness only literature has the power to fill this emptiness and therein lies the future of literature thank you very much